Hey guys, welcome to the channel. You see behind me basically all the work surfaces that I have in this shop. Well, today that's gonna change because my new chemical cabinet that is mobile and my old workbench that I had for all those years when the channel first started is back in the shop now. I'm so glad I kept it. Let me show you how we did it. So I'm gonna show you around my shop real quick and tell you why this is more exciting to me than it probably should be. For one, I'm gonna show you this. That's my outfeed table and my table saw. I like to keep that clear. I don't want to do too much assembly on there. It's called an outfeed table. There's a thing called an outfeed slash assembly table and we've all had them. I had them in my smaller shops and they do well. However, if you're doing a big assembly and you need to go cut something, you know the woes you can have with that. So secondly is this. This is a 48 drawer kind of Ikea hack. Yeah, workbench. Came together really nice. Actually, that's one of my favorite videos I've ever done, partially because of the really heartwarming moment, moment? <laughs> heartwarming moment at the end of the video. Um, that video actually introduced this shop build. Um, during that video, um, at the end of it, I said, if you're still here, if you're a loyal Glimpse Insider, and yes, that's what I'm gonna call you guys, uh, the guys that make it, the guys and gals that make it to the end of the videos, you're a loyal Glimpse Insider, yes, you saw this project and you also got an unlisted link in that description that was kind of hidden and you were able to see the shop build. And we got a thousand or so views in that video before it was launched. And then that, that video itself really did change the trajectory of this channel and I'm so grateful for it. So this is a really, really important project to me. And secondly is this. This is of course my armor tool bench and it is in my new shop corner. I call it my production corner and I love it back there, but there really is no place to do glue ups, no place to just drop things off when I come into the shop without it being a hindrance to production. So now, this is why that's exciting. I'm gonna show you how I got this or why I got this and all the chemical storage underneath is finally safe in the shop. We put a mobile base on it and yes, this is the old top that used to be in my old shop where the channel first started and I'm so glad to get this back in here. So. Without further ado, let's go. So before we get started, I'm going through a little bit of extra hardware I have to make sure it fits some threaded inserts that were used on this chemical cabinet as adjustable feet. Now I found this cabinet on Facebook Marketplace as I find quite a bit of stuff, which is a great resource for the maker for sure. As we're gonna go through this process, I'm gonna cut down a piece of Baltic birch plywood. This is 5 8 inch in thickness. And I'm gonna cut this down to be the exact same dimension as the bottom of the cabinet. So what I'm using here are some countersunk bolts. You can see they just got a typical screw head, but they're machine screws as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that piece of Baltic that I just cut, make sure it's lined up perfectly and whack it with a dead blow in all the corners. And when I turn it over, success. Yeah, baby, it worked. So what I mean by did it work, it actually imprinted the heads of all those bolts on the piece of wood, giving me reference marks that I can drill my holes. Once the holes are drilled, I'm going to show you real quickly here as well. You can see the imprint of the screw and even if you look closely, the Phillips head. And once these holes are drilled, these are going to be perfect for attaching this to those machine screw threaded inserts. Of course, I'm going to come back with my own countersink bit as well. And because these screws are fairly large, I'm using the largest countersink that I have, and I'm still gonna actually move it around a bit more to make that just a little bit more receptive to the screw. I don't want this thing sticking up at all. And so with everything properly aligned, the hole that I drilled is just shy of the diameter of the screw. So it's creating its own threads as it goes down, and then it meets up with the threads underneath, and we've got a super strong hold. Definitely great to have a wooden base in order for me to go ahead and build up. You can see here, I'm taking some Baltic birch, little pieces, little scrap pieces, putting them on the corners, a little glue and CA glue trick to get everything nice and flush and attached. And yeah, of course, this trick basically is using the CA glue as a tool, like I always say, and it's more like a clamp than anything else at this point. And let me show you just how strong it is. Once it sets up for about 20 seconds, I'm just moving the piece we just glued and you can see here it's not going anywhere so the reason we doubled up the material is because when i put casters on anything i like to use at least one inch screws and i like having the tooth of all that material to go ahead and screw these in knowing they're a good strong hold 
Once everything's in, it's time to flip this bad boy over and bring it into the shop. Once I'm in the shop, I realize that, you know, the overhang, hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna have to fix something. So here are my thoughts. So there are definitely a couple things I don't like about this. One, these wheels are way too inset this way. The center of gravity, yes, it's fine, but this, this cabinet may have a tendency to fall forward. And I don't particularly like how the wheel sticks out well beyond this wall. So maybe I'm thinking of bringing the wheels in a little bit and then fashioning something out a little bit. Yeah, let's, uh, let's fix that problem. So honestly, I can't believe just after 20 minutes of this thing being assembled that the glue is that strong already. I'm going to have to end up taking a scraper to go ahead and pry this thing off. And you can see here the glue was already set and the plies came off with it. So after a little hand sanding, a little hand scraping here, we're going to have a flush surface to work with. Shouldn't be a big deal at all. Moving over to the workbench, we're going to layer up plywood over and over to make a 90 degree angled bracket. This should be strong enough, at least I'm hoping it is. And the true test is when I tip the thing back over. So I'll show you that in a second. As you see, we're gonna take some glue, we're gonna put it on the inside edge of this new bracket we've just fashioned. And basically I'm gonna tack it in place, kinda like crazy. You're gonna see one, two, three, four, just, you know, a thousand brads in there. I'm just kidding, but I am gonna do that to both sides. And just for peace of mind, even though I know that the glue joint is gonna be absolutely strong enough, I'm gonna go ahead and take some flush trim screws, about four or five each on each leg, just for a little added reassurance. And this thing should be super strong. So I did say I was concerned about the wheel sticking out past the edge of the cabinet. Well, I'm not too concerned about that in hindsight, so I'm not gonna do it. But I am gonna reattach these so that the center of gravity is much more stable. This is the overhang that I needed. It comes directly to the face of the cabinet. And again, we're gonna use one inch screws and I'm wondering, is this strong enough? Well, you're about to find out. We're gonna tip this thing over and all that weight gets put on this joint right here. And success, no worries whatsoever. Turns out, definitely strong enough. So now it's time to fashion a new top for this cabinet and y'all remember this? If you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you've seen this marine decking, this teak and holly plywood that's been around in my shop for a long time. I've saved the outfeed table from many moons ago and now it's time to alter it to make it new again. And as it turns out, this thing was just fashioned on with glue and screws. Now, I think the glue is going to pop off of these pretty easily because glue doesn't stick to laminate very well. As you see, these screws are coming from a 2x4 that's really old growth. I'm actually going to save these and probably do something with them. I found a new growth 2x4 versus this one, and man, the difference is pretty crazy. And look at this, this is old dried glue on the underside of the old workbench. I gotta know, who does this? Who wipes a little bit of glue off their finger onto the underside of their workbench? Here is proof that, yeah, I'm guilty of it for sure. And it makes some pretty cool effects as you're trying to take these screws out. You can see here, definitely on this one, check this thing out. Ugh, it's actually a little gross looking. Pretty satisfying though, I will tell you. So once we get all the screws removed from this thing, it's now time to take these two by fours and the little pieces of wood inside that were used to kind of mount it in various different ways that I've done over the years. Using the same scraper, like I said, yep, laminate and glue, well, they don't really match. Cleaning it all up, I did sand it down pretty well. I'm not gonna bother you with showing you the whole process but it doesn't quite fit on this cabinet. We're gonna to have to cut it down just a little bit. So we're gonna do that here. So I still to this day get questions about what this stuff is and I will explain just a little bit more in the video. So stay tuned for that. But first we're gonna make this thing just a little bit thicker. So in an attempt to thicken the bench up on the edges, we're cutting down some Baltic here. As I'm making some marks, my daughter is gonna come in here and explain to me that her little brother is spraying her with the hose. I know it's kind of <laughs> so cute. It's kind of hard to hear, but that's what she was doing. She was saying, he's spraying me with those, daddy. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. I love it when they come join me. So after cutting these Baltic strips to the right width and length, we're gonna go ahead and fashion them in place. Now the idea here is to layer these pieces to where the cabinet itself is a compression fit. Now I'll explain more about that too later on. You can see here, I've just kind of basically framing out the bottom of the cabinet and that inner portion is essentially the measurement of the cabinet itself. So when we turn it over, check it out. Oh man. 
Now, I'd hate to be cliche here and say, like a glove, but that's exactly what happened here. That thing is on there, buddy. Well, this top is really on here. I took careful measurements. It is, the compression fit in there is really great, and honestly, it's not really going anywhere. I promise you that. However, if you needed to, you could take these type of brackets, these little angle brackets here, and you could put them, say, in various spots around the entire build, and this would be a perfect solution to hold this down. But, as luck would have it, we don't need it. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. So the two most commonly asked questions about this stuff are what is it exactly and where did I get it? Well, I got it from a place called Eco Relics here in Northeast Florida. It's a salvage yard. They have a bunch of it. It's marine decking. It's teak and holly plywood that is specially designed to go on the use of yachts and boats. You'll see a lot of high-end yachts have this stuff on their decks, on their cabinets, all over the place. And they had a bunch of it that happened to be damaged on the sides and that's where I got it. Years ago, they're out of it now, unfortunately, but I still got a few pieces left. Now, it's time to load this thing up. Of course, I've got to put all of my Total Boat resin in here, get those things nice and nestled in. I do have a coupon code. You can save yourself 10% on your entire order by using the coupon code you see there on the screen. And also, every other chemical I basically had in the shop that was out in the open is now in a safe place in a metal cabinet. So glad to get this done. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this ride. This was a good project for me to get under my belt. I needed chemical storage. It really wasn't an in-depth project per se. I've got more of those coming down the pipe for sure. Lots of them coming down the pipe. Can't wait to show you what I've been working on. Got some great stuff coming up. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I hope I've earned your subscription. And I wanna thank you for joining me for this project. Your viewership does mean the world to me, it really does because that's why we do what we do. And you know what, every little video I do, I hope someone gets something out of it. And if you did, let me know in the comments, I really appreciate it. Y'all have a great day, and until the next video, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.